You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Ganaic and Justin Goddard. Buffalo Podcast. My name is Andrew Ganag, and alongside me is my co-host Justin Goddard. Thanks for tuning into tonight's episode. You can find us on social media platforms and on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Uh, we're also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, we're on it. We got a great episode lined up for you tonight. Um, so let's break down the agenda. But first, Justin, how are we doing tonight? Uh, I'm simply wonderful tonight. Yeah, fresh off the uh, first bout of the COVID vaccine, so hey. hopefully we don't pass out halfway through the recording here. But I feel good right now. <laughs> well, that's good that you feel good, and uh, congratulations on the first shot. So here's Thanks, the sir. here's the episode breakdown. We're gonna highlight some. We're gonna quickly highlight some Bills related news. We'll jump into our B- wandering Buffalo interview with an uh, old friend of mine named Steve Bowers. We'll switch gears into the 2020 defensive performance review by jumping into the defensive line room. Justin has some prospects to talk about in regards to the draft. And then lastly, we'll preview into our next week's episode. So let's jump into the Bills-related news. We've already talked about some of this through our news update videos that we posted on our Facebook page. The Bills signed Emmanuel Sanders. They traded Lee Smith to the Atlanta Falcons for a conditional, what was it, seventh round pick, Justin? Yes, yep. yeah. So I, props to Bean. I don't know how he pulled that off. The Bills signed a three-year contract with Matt Hawk. Star Tulele said he was coming back for sure. We tendered offensive lineman Ike Bakker. Levi Walsh signed a one-year deal, and he quoted, I want to be in Buffalo. We're going to win a Super Bowl. We lost out on the Carl Lawson sweepstakes. Oh, well. Gronk apparently seriously considered coming to the Bills. I would have loved that if we got him here. The Bills signed Mitchell Trubisky to a one-year deal. Two and a half million dollars. Taiwan Joe's re-signed, and Mark Carrier was named player engagement director. So he basically oversees player engagement, education program. So that's prep, life, and life after the NFL. So mainly develops programs that focus on several several areas of social responsibility. So like domestic violence, sexual assault, DUI, gambling awareness, etc. So it's good to see that the Bills are improving in other areas outside of the gridiron. Justin, how does this news update make you feel? What do you want to talk about? Um, So I'd say probably the one I'm most excited about is Levi Wallace being back, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a low-key excitement. You know, it's just another piece of bringing the band back together like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. But now we're going into the draft, and I know if the board doesn't fall the way that we want it to fall, I got a CB2. And we can go from there. Um, it opens up the doors that you're not picking for need or anything like that. You can take the best player that falls to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that we haven't really been able to do a lot as a franchise. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah. It, it always feel, felt like to me that the Bills were trying to bring in a veteran to compete with Levi Wallace. But now Levi Wallace is that veteran. <laughs> right. So shoes on the other foot yeah. here. And now you can maybe look towards the draft, take one of your top three picks and put it into a cornerback and have some real competition for oh, yeah. Levi Wallace and not just, you know, this guy played well six years ago. Let's give him a chance at a veteran minimum or mm-hmm. give Josh Norman $6 million. Right. I love the cauldron of competition. Uh, ne- the last thing I personally want to talk about is the signing of Mitchell Trubisky. One year, $2.5 million. Bills Mafia seems to be pretty divided. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I am in the camp of loving it. It's a one-year, $2.5 million deal for someone who can come in who's a r- average starter in the NFL. It, things didn't work out for him in Chicago, but if he gets put in, God forbid that Josh Allen goes down, we have someone that could go 50, probably that could fill Josh's shoes. So I'm all for it. A lot of people don't like it. And I'll put it like this. The Eagles had Nate Sudfield Sudfield on their team for $2 million. 
and he he saw week 17 for like a quarter <laughs> the, the tank game yeah so we we just signed for five hundred thousand dollars more a reasonable starter in the nfl that could come in and actually win a game justin how do you feel about this well, I want to start by saying um, I think uh, somebody on this show might have uh, predicted this one. Oh. oh, yeah, you know, I did say on the very first episode that I was not aware that the Bills were infatuated with Mitchell Trubisky when he was entering the, the draft. I, I wasn't aware that they, they had an eye on him, and looks like he was available and being pushed back to Zoom conference on Thursday from 2 to 3 and said, I'm, I'm, I'm going for this guy. <laughs> yeah. credit where credit's due you called it yeah i completely forgot um, about that but yeah down, down the lines of what you said you know this guy was a starter and you know up and down as a starter but he had the expectations of a number two overall pick mm -hmm. they traded up to get him and you know he's never really been in a tremendous situation in chicago um and he's been a passable starter but what really tickles me on this one is the 2.5 million like that's nothing man mm -hmm. that's what we were paying barkley and you know i was terrified of barkley ever coming into a game right and i still hope josh doesn't ever go down but i think this was a real win-win deal for the bills and for mitch trubisky yeah uh maybe we have a preseason and he lights it up and you know it, he could become some trade bait down the line if you know if they're comfortable at all with jake Fromm or davis webb in the building already and they want to roll the dice somebody could have a starting quarterback go down and all of a sudden you know a guy that was starting last year all of a sudden looks real enticing maybe you can swing a pick out of it too i think there's multiple benefits to it mm -hmm. and i think it was an upgrade at the position and that's something i was looking for so right psyched about that i a hundred percent agree it could develop into something real great all right, so that's going to wrap it up for this week's news update, and now we're going to go right into our interview with this week's Wandering Buffalo. Bonus fanatic, current active duty sailor man, and old friend Steve Bowers. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing, Steve? Hey, Tell it's us a, a pleasure to be yourself. here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. This is great. Absolutely. I'm having this is a blast. I love it so far. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you're from? Where are you now? Give us, give the people a little uh, introduction into who you are. Yeah, so uh, I'm originally from Rochester, New York. A uh, diehard Bills fan, obviously. Um, I went to Gage Tyler High School, graduated in 2011. Uh, so go Spartans. Okay. <laughs> They're trash, but whatever. Man. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so I graduated Gates, uh, but now I'm living here in uh, uh, Callahan, Florida, which is about. 45 minutes to an hour north of Jacksonville. Uh, Navy mm -hmm. brought me down here, and uh, uh, I love it so far. You know, I mean, I'm not dealing with the ice cold up in New York, so uh, it was nice. I was playing around the golf the other day, and I had to Snapchat my friends, and it's like, hey, it's 75 degrees outside, and I'm playing some golf. So kind of had to rub in their face a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, if if uh, you sent me that message, I would have been a little jealous myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure on my walk with my dog, I saw... I saw some snow coming down on his head, and I was like, dang. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got a couple four-letter words. I got a couple four-letter words for that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> so do you foresee yourself moving back anytime soon, or do you plan on staying put or moving to maybe, like, a different place? Um, well, I'm, I just re-enlisted for another six years, so uh, wherever the Navy takes me, I guess, is where I'm going to be headed next. Uh, <clears throat> fingers crossed right now. Trying to put orders in uh, to go to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Um, so hopefully, where I'm going to try to head to next. Um, but pretty much wherever the Navy takes me, man. That's um, uh, a lot of orders are up in Virginia. I was, I've already been stationed in Virginia before. Don't ever want to go back. Um, sorry for any of the people listening. Uh, that's where you're stationed at. So I'm sorry. Um, but uh, and uh, but anywhere like San Diego, California, uh, uh, Bremerton, Washington, Brown, Connecticut. So, uh, but for right now. I'm pretty content with uh, Jacksonville, Florida. So it sounds like you prefer, you would uh, prioritize the warm weather over, oh, with the exception of Virginia. Oh, yeah, with the exception of Virginia. Yeah, it's, I think it's cold up there, too. So, but there is well, a, this guy would never come to Buffalo in free agency. Uh, no, of course. Uh, 
those fans are great though, man. So I mean, I'd obviously consider it. But um, <laughs> there is a there is a bar actually in Norfolk, Virginia called the Dirty Buffalo. Uh, kind of doing some free advertising here for that guy. But um, there's a bar that actually sells uh, garbage plates and the fat blue. So uh, hey. I went there every Sunday when I was up in Virginia. So that's for sure. Yeah. Hey, if you did get uh, kicked back to Virginia, at least you got that to look for. That's right. That's right. And I understand that you're not alone. Correct. You're living with someone. Yeah, I'm, I'm living with my girlfriend right now uh, here in Florida. Perfect. Of well, I dog, think Justin's so. got, <laughs> of course, and uh, it's. Uh, I think Justin's got a good question for you in regards so, to that. Uh, is your so your girlfriend's a pretty big Bills fan too? Uh, well, because of me, yeah, uh, I'll take a lot of credit for that yeah. one. Uh, so who's a bigger Bills fan, you or her? Ooh, uh, well, it depends. Uh, I'm definitely a bigger Bills fan, but I think she's she's more of a Josh Allen fan herself. So she she loves her Josh Allen. I got her a Josh Allen jersey and everything like that. So she loves it, and that's a. Uh, it was kind of weird though, because I, I bought that jersey for her uh, the week after the rape, but we beat the Ravens, and I didn't let her wear it. So don't, don't blame me on the, the loss of Kansas City because she didn't wear it uh, from the Kansas Chiefs. But I told her she, she wasn't allowed. So she hasn't actually worn the jersey yet because hasn't had an opportunity. <laughs> you know, Steve, I kind of want to blame you for it because she oh, didn't here. put it on. Well, you know, like I, I'm a superstitious person myself, so uh, I, I didn't want to. To run that risk that like hey we just had these two great games against the Colts and the Ravens like uh, I don't want to I don't want to jinx it so uh, so I, I bought her this jersey at, at Fanatics because she's like oh she loves Josh Allen and she thinks he's handsome so, uh, so that's <laughs> so I personally got the superstitiousness too I, I wore the same jersey every every game this year me too I'm, I, I wear this exact thing I'm wearing right now the only thing I'm missing right now is my zoos so. Uh, plus the pregame shotguns, you know. Plus, plus the pregame shotguns. That's right. I always got to listen to uh, uh, WGR five fifty while I'm in the shower drinking a couple full of fat, so uh, <laughs> to get me prepped up for the game. You got another question for him, Justin? Yeah. So is it like a, a Hallmark movie? You guys met over the bills, and the rest is history, or how did you guys uh, end up getting getting together there? You know. Uh, the Bills really didn't have a whole lot to do with it, I'll be honest with you. Um, we are just typical, you know, out of the box type of thing. Just, um, that's how we met. So, um, but yeah, they, uh, the Bills like didn't have much to do with it. And she, I, I was a diehard Bills fan, and she knew that because I told her. Um, and because, of course, every diehard Bills fan's got to tell every diehard, you know, anybody that, you know, I'm, I am a huge Bills fan. You know that? So, cool. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it was... Uh, had nothing to do with the Bills, but uh, definitely, like, the Bills are now, like, this big part of it uh, because she's always, like, scrolling through her Facebook and she's like, hey, she actually told me today, she's like, hey, you know the Bills signed Emmanuel Sanders? It's like, what? Like, the Bills signed Emmanuel Sanders? Sorry if I just put some breaking news out into your podcast for you, but, um, but yeah, it's like, oh, my God, the Bills signed Emmanuel Sanders. And she was, like, also saying, she's like, oh, they just re-signed Matt Alana. So, like, she's definitely super into it now, too, so. Uh, which is great. Which right. is great. So it's a, it's a lot of fun to be able to have someone to, to just sit there and talk sports about. You know, just have a good time. So. so, right. So it sounds like you played a big part of influencing her to become a Bills fan. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. She actually told me she's like, I'm not going to be a fan of any team, and I was like, oh, I'm telling you, you're going to be a Bills fan because it's just going to just rubs off on people. So everywhere I go, it just rubs off on people. So. Right. So. Who influenced you to become a Bills fan? That's a great question. Um, well, I, I, a lot of it kind of goes into probably my family. Uh, my dad used to have season tickets when I was a kid back in the, the J.P. Lossman days, or like the True Bledsoe era even days. Um, like I remember seeing the, uh, the Bills play Michael Vick and Work Done. And uh, was it Work Done? I think it was Work Done. Um, but either way, Warp Dunn ran for like 200 yards, and Michael Vick ran for like 200 yards, and like it was just an embarrassing game to be at. Um, but like that, that's the era I kind of grew up in, right? So, um, so I'd say my dad had a huge influence on me, um, and then my other one, probably like my uncle Rip, which is my mom's brother, uh, he had a big impact on me. Uh, I remember going to, he, he was, uh, my mom grew up in Buffalo, so we would go to Buffalo to watch all the games and everything. And, uh, I know there's like a picture of me, like in my Zubas. And this is actually in the 90s, so like Zubas were actually in style, not just like Bill's fan attire. It was like an actual thing to wear. They still are. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, it's me play, like watching the Bills game with Bob Cool. So like th- those two people are probably my biggest uh, proponents for, for being a Bills fan and being a Bills fan I am. Uh, I do like to joke that my dad's, like I say all the time, that my dad's single proudest moment of me were my first words. Uh, because my first words were touchdown to Kelly. And uh, there was like during mm. the Bills Super Bowl runs in the early 90s. And so after that, like everything didn't matter about me playing baseball or anything in high school or me, you know, pitching a shutout in summer league ball or whatever, you know, uh, running, you know, a sub five minute mile in cross country. It was the fact my first words were a touchdown to Kelly. You're, you set the bar, bar high. Yeah, set the bar early. high early, right. Exactly. Your actual first words were touchdown Jim Kelly? 100%. Yeah. That's like, and it's one of my problems wow. moments too, so I like to chip about that. So that's why I'm wearing a Jim Kelly jersey wow. today, man. So if that isn't influential, I don't know what is. They basically spawned you yeah. in the gauntlet of Zumbas and blue lights. <laughs> you oh, are, yeah. Bill. You are definitely a Oh, Bill absolutely. Fan. Um, and I know I, you're a little I, away from I'm home, the, so I. I Right. I know you are a little way from home, so I think Right. So I think Justin got a question about your home life compared uh to where you are now. Yeah, so you're uh, so you're down there in Florida now, so what's it like being a Bills fan down in Florida? Are you you the only guy down there, so you gotta hide in your house on Sundays or you got you got some spots you go, a couple of Bills back or bars? Uh COVID kinda ruined that. So uh I haven't gone to too many Bills back with bars in a long time. I used to go out because uh, this was before I had Sunday ticket or anything like that, so I couldn't watch the game from my house, so I had to go find a bar to watch it. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, man, anywhere you go, you're going to find Bills fans. They're, they're, they're everywhere. I, I was out uh, not too long ago just getting a burger, and uh, someone walked up with a Doug Flutie jersey on it like a Tuesday in the middle of summer. So, or not summer, but like early spring. So it's like anywhere you go, you're going to find Bills fans. Um, I got one person, I almost cussed them out because uh, they cut me off on, uh, on my way to work. And this dude just sped up in front of me, cut me off, slowed down, and I saw that he had a West Hurt license plate. And then like, he got out of the way and I passed him and I kind of looked at him and he had a Bills hat on and he saw my Bills sticker on the back of my Jeep. And so he just gave me this big thumbs up, like, go Bills! And it's like, damn dude, you almost just caused a wreck to tell me go Bills, but alright, yeah, go Bills, man. I'm about it, go Bills. We'll let it go. So, um, <laughs> You'll let it slide. We're everywhere. Oh, yeah, of course I let it slide. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're everywhere, man. Uh, and it's great, like, um, being down here in Jacksonville, having a, an NFL team um, that just, just gets owned by another fan base that's a 1,000 miles away. So uh, that's, that's one of the best parts about it. Is Jaguars fans just don't know what to do with, when the Bills fan in this room. They said, no, I did like this guy's a psychopath. What's wrong with this person? So, like, this guy's telling me facts about my team that I didn't even know just to start an argument. So, uh, and and he's right. Like, that's the best part about it. And so, it's like a lot of my friends like had to pull me out of rooms. So they're like, okay, dude, you don't need to talk to this. Like, this person's like, this is unnecessary. So, like, just, just, you're just starting some stuff to start some stuff at this point. So, it's like, nah, but I got a point. Mark Brunel is not better than Kelly. You know? <laughs> so, it sounds like the streets of Florida aren't necessarily safe if there are other Bills Mafia out on oh, driving. Everywhere. Right. But I know you're out to sea a lot because you're an active, You're currently active duty, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. I'm on the so, USS Rhode Island, which is a ballistic missile submarine. Nice. Okay. So what kind of challenges does that present, being out to sea a lot and being a Bills fan? <sighs> So uh, I got underway this last uh, deployment, literally on opening day Sunday, uh, that day. Like when we played the Jets, opening day, I missed that game because we had to go out to sea. Um, and, but before we did that, uh, a good friend of mine, actually in my division, um, downloaded off of Google real quick, just printed out the uh, entire season uh, schedule. So we were, Inside my, my my center on my ship, and we were just uh, making our picks throughout the entire couple of weeks that would go by, and then every now and then, uh, every well, Monday, we would get uh, the idea of you know, what the NFL schedule was like and who was doing what. So um, we had some material deficiencies at some point, uh, and so we actually did get to pull back in. And so I did get to catch, I think it was week three, uh, against the Raiders. Uh, I got to catch that game, which I was like, and uh, I got to watch that. In cruise mess on my ship, uh, 
like I wasn't allowed to leave my ship or anything. Like I was, so I sat there and I watched it uh, on someone's Hulu, and I put it on the TV there and everything. I was just sitting there. I was the only person there. And then all of a sudden, like I got this huge gathering behind me. It's like, "Watch the Bills game." Like, yeah, of course I'm watching the Bills game. Like, this is, you, know, you know me. I'm the only guy wearing a Bills hat. Like I wear Bills socks every time. You know, always weren't repping the Bills even out to sea. So um, and so before I knew it, like I had like 10 or 15 people, 30 people inside a cruise mess watching the Bills game, watching them beat the brakes off the Raiders. And they're like, wow, those are doing pretty good this year. And I was like, this is what I've been trying to tell you guys for the past, you know, three seasons. Like I, every year I say 12 and 4, we're 12 and 4. Hey, Bob, what are the Bills going to do this year? 12 and 4, guaranteed, 12 and 4. And like, all right, we went 10 and 6. Uh, I think the year before that we were nine and seven, but I said, yeah, we were nine and seven, but we were like three plays away from being twelve and four. I'm like, you talk about three plays away from being twelve and four. It's like Josh Allen getting hurt, Nathan Peterman coming in. That's a big one, you know. There's things like that. Like, I, but anyway, not to take out a tangent. Um, so then we went out back to see and everything, and uh, I didn't get end up getting back until week fifteen. Uh, when I, that's when I got. I think it was fifteen, fifteen or six, fifty, um, and that's when we played the New England Patriots. And so, uh, but yeah, that entire time I was just getting messages saying like, hey, the Bills, you know, so, and like sometimes I kind of had to decipher a message because they didn't explicitly say what the score was. Like there was one time where I found out about the Hail Murray thing and uh, I found out about that because they said, you know, uh, Kyler Murray doesn't have as much luck this week like the luck he had against the Bills. And like, and so I found out about that like a week later and I was like, oh my God, we're going to be by the Cardinals in the last play of the game. Like, yeah. And that, like, that just ruined, like, my week. Like, just even though I found out about it a week later. Like, you guys have already been grieving and done all your thing. I found out about that a week later. And, like, oh, it just ruined my week. Right. Like, now i got to go and watch it. So, yeah, this it sucks. So uh, I was just pissed. But then uh, I ended up getting back, and I actually blew out the tires on the, on the New England Patriots, um, beating them, mm-hmm. like, was it 38-9 to nine or something like that? And that was the first game I got to come back and see. So that was it. That's a really nice welcome home gift for me, especially against the Patriots, right. man. Especially against the Patriots. Right. So it sounds like there's a time slippage from when you're actually out and see and from when you get the results. And the only way that you can actually get the results of the game is when people message you directly. Yeah. And I imagine getting that text about the Hail Murray, you just kind of – you get the you get the text. I imagine you put the phone in your pocket, walk out to the deck, and just like look off into the distant sunset, well, and you just think to yourself, "The days at sea of getting well, longer." Well, it's tough to do that when you're you know uh, <laughs> x amount of hundred feet underneath the water, man. So like this, uh, being on the sub, and oh. so like I don't I don't have I don't, oh. I don't get texts or anything. I don't like I get emails like once a week when I'm out there, oh, and so like yeah, it's right. like, and so um, and on top of that, like I'm like. My girlfriend texted or emailed me one time and I was out there. She's like, yeah, I'm just watching the Bills game. I was like, that's great. I'm glad you're watching the Bills game. What's the freaking score? Like, like, like that's what I care about. Like, tell, me, tell me what the score is. Hmm. And like, I emailed her. I was like, yeah, I'd love to know what the game Send yeah, one long email know. with like, the play-by-play. Play. Right. And then uh, I texted or I sent my, my mom an email too. And I was like, well, you like let my brother know to like send me an email to let me know what the scores are or something? And uh but his, for some reason, his thing was encrypted properly or something, and it wouldn't come through. Yeah, 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 I could go on about that. Mm-hmm. But, um, so yeah, I wasn't getting emails right. from that. So I was only getting emails from uh, the Associated Press, which is who actually sent us the, the scores. It was like literally a news article that we just basically, I was basically reading the newspaper on the web. Right. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot of obstacles and hurdles. It didn't stop me, man. It didn't stop Just to get up to speed. That. Right. So what grinds your gears the most about the Bills? Or specifically, what can someone say to you that will get you going? I know you're pretty active in the Bills Facebook group, <laughs> and I love watching your comments. Um, so tell, tell, us, uh, tell us what someone can say or, you know, something maybe the Bills do that I might honestly, get Honestly, just something dumb, man. Like, there's so much dumb stuff in that Bills face. I'm not saying I'm a smart person either. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. Like, I'm not trying to say... Like I'm smarter than uh, uh, was it Chris Brown or whatever, you know, or Steve Tasker, you know, because obviously, like, I whatever they say is basically what I go off of. Um, but there's just some stuff in that group page, man. I'm just like, oh, this person gets this thing approved, like, and uh, like I saw one the other day. They said, "Who would you rather have, Johnny Smith or Matt Milano?" It's like, 
who are you talking about? One's a tight end, one's a linebacker. Am I Leslie Frazier or, or Brian Dave? Which one? Like, yeah. So, um, so I was just like, what, what, it's like, comparing apples to oranges. Like, don't. And it's just stuff that like spins me up like that. It's just like it didn't need to be said. Like that just didn't need. Like that was a dumb comment. And that person probably tried to sound smart. Um, and so, like I said, I'm not trying to sound like I'm the smart person ever. Cause I get, I get owned a lot by like my friends at work when they're ever like, talking about football and stuff. They're like, oh, dude, you're stupid. Like, like, cause I don't know what a cover three defense looks like or something. But, um, and so exactly. So, um, but yeah, there's just a lot. There's a lot of stuff that grabs my ears, man. Like about the Bills and uh, and my, right. when my girlfriend and I were reading uh, anything about the Bills, and I was thinking that's like she, she just like looked at me and said, "You can really get spun up about anything, can't you?" When it comes to the bills, it's like I stop talking about the bills. Like it's, it's really what it boils down to. Like I, I could just go on and on and on and on about talking uh, talking sports. So uh, funny, quick thing. Uh, if you look right. through like my, this is where she like sparked that was she was looking through my text messages. This is what she wanted to do, um, and she was looking through everything and she looked and she's like, uh, all you and your dad talk about is either baseball or football. Like. He just, he's never asking, like, because he hasn't seen me in over a couple of years, like a year and a half or so. Like, we're never talking about, like, how are you doing, you know, our things, whatever. That's my mom. But, like, my dad's like, man, the Bills suck. Or, like, you know, or, man, the Pirates suck or something like that. So, he's like, this team's trash, blah, blah, blah. So, like, it's just me and him going off and banter uh, back and forth, just, just about sports, because that's just what we relate over. I can imagine the conversation right now. Oh, we got a new dog. Oh, we sold the house. Oh, yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, let's talk yeah, more yeah, about yeah, the bills exactly. and whatnot. So <laughs> I, it sounds like you you definitely like to go on about your stories and whatnot. So I think uh, Justin's got a good question for you in regards to one of your more Bill's famous stories. Yeah, I've been, I've been waiting for this one. Andrew teased this earlier, told me you uh, – you got a story about the wild card game against the Jaguars. You might have been so, sitting next to somebody to special. To tell you the story, I kind of got to preface it a little bit because it was all by, by chance. It was all by chance. It was all had to do with my loud mouth um, that I even noticed this. So anyway, um, I was stationed in Virginia at the time. And so uh, I got stationed in Virginia, and then they told me, like, hey, there's a school in Kings Bay, Georgia, which is where I'm stationed right now. So it's, like, only a couple miles north. Um school in Kingsbury, Georgia that we're sending you to. Uh, and I was like, oh, sweet, that's great. That's like, I found out the Bills are playing the Jaguars in Jacksonville. I'm going to this school, and it's like around the same exact time. Like, there's no way I'm not going to this game. Like, I have to go to this game. Like, this is destiny. Uh, like, this was shortly right after uh, the, the New Year's, the greatest New Year's of my life when we finally clinched the playoffs, and Andy Dalton threw that to, to I think Tyler Boyd or something. But, uh, but anyway, like, yep. shortly right after, and then they're telling me, like, hey, you're going to this school. In Jacksonville, basically, I'm like, oh my god, this is great. So um, I didn't have a lot of money at the time, still don't. Um, and so me and my buddy, who's a he's a he's a Cowboys fan, but he's like, dude, I'll go to a playoff game. This is cool. I've never like been able to see this either. So um, he's a Cowboys fan. But anyway, um, <laughs> and so uh, hey. I was like, yeah, let's go. And so we pack up and we're like, all right. I didn't have any tickets or anything like this at the time. I was like, if worse comes to worse, you know, like, whatever, I'll just go to a bar. and like, cool, I'm in the atmosphere. Like, that's all that matters to me. Like, I'm right next to the stadium that works. You know, kind of like watching the Sabres game outside of the Sabres stadium. It's like, just, it's almost just as good. It's free. So, uh, I was like, cool, I'll just do that. Anyway, I'm tailgating. I'm right. running into a bunch of people. I, I, I carried two thirty racks of Labatt Blue down there with me. Um, and people are looking at me like, dude, we got La Bat Blue. Like, where'd you find this stuff? I was like, I just came from New York, man. That's just like, I had to stop and get this stuff. So, um, you know, like, this is great. So I'm like, you know, I'm mingling with people. I'm talking to people. Like, we're shocking and beer, throwing footballs around, talking about the Bills and how we're going to beat the Jaguars and yada, yada, yada. And talking to a bunch of, you know, smack to the Jaguars fans and that terrible fan base that they are. Um, oh, I shouldn't say terrible. I should say not as, not as uh, proud as, as we are. So, anyway. To keep going, um, I tell my buddy, I'm like, I gotta get in this game. I, I, like, I don't have a choice. Like, I, I gotta get in this game. And so it's like, oh, let's try to scalp some tickets. So I run up to this guy and he uses, I saw scalp tickets. Turned out to be 500 bucks uh, to scalp these tickets for three tickets. It was two, two of my friends, but like, uh, it was his buddy and then me. Anyway, so he scalped these tickets and he's like, I can't pay for this dude. And I was like, I got you. So I paid for it and I, I dropped $500 because I, I, I can't not go to this game. And so, 
scalp is, we're in the nosebleeds, whatever, game's going on. Um, and it's about halftime, and uh, Buffalo had just failed to convert on a fourth down. Um, and we were losing 3 nothing. I think it was at halftime, uh, if I remember. And it was a four, 500 bucks to see three points, you know. Um, but anyway, this guy, I'm wearing my Jim Kelly jersey, <laughs> and this, this jerk behind me, man, this guy just starts talking all sorts of crap about Jim Kelly. He's like, that's my, my first words, right? So, like, I was like, you're, gonna, you're not going to talk shit about Jim Kelly, man. I'm not going to let you do it. And so uh, he's talking all sorts of crap about Jim Kelly, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm trying not to pay him any mind, but he, but he keeps pestering, pestering me a little bit. And eventually, just as I'm about to say something, who turns around right in front of me is Daryl Talley. Daryl Talley's literally sitting right in front of me. I, this entire game, I sat through an entire half of football, didn't even realize Daryl Talley was right in front of me. And I'm wearing the guy, the jersey of the guy he used to play with. And, and I could tell he was just, he was annoyed because this guy was just saying some disrespectful things about Jim Kelly. Like, disrespectful things, I'm not going to get into detail. And he turned around and he just looked at him, he's like, hey man, you know, and just kind of gave him a look. And, like, I kind of forgot completely about this, this argument that I was in this, this guy with the crowd with. Like, I turned around and I was like, oh my God, you're Daryl Talley. And he was just like, yeah, I'm Daryl Talley. And I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it was just the craziest thing ever. Like I scalped these tickets. I was in school. Like I, I should not have been there. And I just happened to sit behind in the crowd with Daryl Talley. And like he kind of looked like he was like, like he's in the nosebleeds with a bunch of peasants like myself. So it's like clearly he just wasn't going to be one of those guys that wants to get honored on the field beforehand. He just kind of wanted to watch and support the Bills, which is great to see that like the former players and everything like that are still support. And then they're all showing up like OJ was there uh, I didn't see him I wish I did but uh, I didn't see him but yeah it's just crazy like I, I got to meet Daryl Talley and so like my Facebook profile picture for the longest time was just me and Daryl Talley so I had to change that one but uh, right that's, a, that's yeah, awesome that's, man absolutely that's a way to shut absolutely. a guy up real quick <laughs> right <You laughs> that's got right a former pro athlete <laughs> mad at you now yeah, I got some I, well alright Steve do you have any questions? No, for man. Us? I love what you guys are doing. This is great. Like, I'm, oh, we I'm, got I'm one glad more. you guys uh, uh, are doing this and being able to talk about the bills. Like, I'm jealous. Like, anytime you want to have me on your podcast, if I'm, if I'm invited again, I'm happy to be on here, man. This is great. All right. Justin has one more quick question, and then you didn't ask your famous question, <laughs> right. Andrew. Well, do you do you want me to take? You or gotta do you know. Me? Yeah. Well, I gotta know. Are your chicken wings in Florida? You get them, them breaded ones, or do they got chicken wings down there? Oh no, they, they don't. Okay, dude, they don't really have chicken wings. Let's be real; like you're never gonna compare it to those. Um, but they, yeah, they got chicken wings. Like, they, they, like I don't eat the boneless yeah. ones; those are just chicken nuggets. So, like, you gotta get the, the bone in traditional. But uh, I was, I'm a pretty stickler about that one. I'll, I'll have some wings. Like, yeah, I'll have these. They're not that good. Right. That good, so, so. All right. Well, um, if you don't have any questions for us, unless you do. No, no questions. No, nah, man. Was, yeah. Like I said, this was fun. Like, like I said, I'm sorry. Oh, I went no. on a bunch of tangents, but can't get me to stop talking. No, I no, you're good. Bills, man, so. that's, yeah, that's absolutely. what it's here for. All right, Steve. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, and I think I speak for Justin and I when I say thank you so much for not only your service, but for joining our show and sharing these amazing stories and answering our questions. You've done an amazing job being a guest. So thank you. Well, I appreciate it. That, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It was a blast. And like I said, I'm happy to do this anytime. Great. This is great. Go Bills. Thanks for your service, man. I appreciate it. Hey, go Bills. Go Bills. If you'd like to join our show, you can email us at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast or give us a DM on social media by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're going to take a quick break. And then we'll be right back. We're going to jump right into the defensive line review. Right off the bat, all I can think about the defensive line and Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier is rotation, rotation, rotation. Did it work? I'm going to go ahead and say kind of, not really, I guess. The run defense needed some, it needed some milk, as you know, my friends and I would like to say. Uh, the defensive line couldn't keep the linebackers clean, so it was hard for our, the defense, uh, the running backs to defend the, against the run. 
So without further ado, let's just jump into the defensive ends first. We'll start with Jerry Hughes, old reliable, the last remaining member from the cold front. This year he had four and a half sacks, generated a lot of pressure as usual. I love that fumble return for touchdown. He didn't want to go down. The team was saying go down, but he was like, nah, I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in for this no matter what. Justin, tell me that you have the same affinity for Jerry Hughes as I do. Yeah, love Jerry Hughes. Um, My favorite thing about Jerry Hughes is how he developed not only as a player but as a person Mm -hmm. in the organization over the years. I I remember the early days of Jerry Hughes, and it was like boneheaded penalty after boneheaded penalty. He would take, you know, late hits, uh, unnecessary roughness, all kinds of personal fouls. He'd jump off sides. And just as he progressed, he not only became like a team leader, he's a team captain, um, but you just really saw him grow as a player and as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing I really love about Jerry Hughes is we got him back in the day I don't know if you were if you were around for this the one, Calvin but we Shepherd traded him chick. for Kelvin yeah. Shepard. Yeah. You know what Kelvin Shepard's doing right now? I'm pretty sure he's on the Chargers. As Detroit. No. Or the he's Lions. A, yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. linebacker linebacker coach for Detroit. Mm. So, I mean, we still got Jerry producing at a fairly high level, mm-hmm. and the guy that we traded him for is out of the league. So, love me some Jerry Hughes. Nice. Like to see him end his career with Buffalo. Right. Same with me. Moving on, Mario Addison. He's old, but maybe not as reliable as I thought, <laughs> at least uh, when he, his first year in Buffalo. He brought he was brought in, people like to say, because of the Carolina ties. Bean loves him. He loves to mention that he found him. I believe he was on the Washington football team's practice squad, and then he scooped him up from there. He had five sacks. Maybe he just had a down year. I know he had previous multiple double digit sacks sack years, so that maybe maybe it was just a down year. I expect more. I expected more from this signing when it first happened. Although I, he did restructure his deal, which is very cool, and I appreciate that he's helping out the team. And. When I think of the Hale Murray play, and I don't like talking about this, I just remember Mario Addison trying to go for the tackle instead of contain. And if you're going to look at anyone for the Hale Murray play, I'm not going to say it was Mario Addison, but you definitely didn't help by doing that. Justin, how do you feel about the the uh, Mario Addison? Uh, I feel like overall he had an okay year. Mm-hmm. Um, just at this stage of, in his career, like there there wasn't much flash there. Um, for the most part, I think he played pretty well with Contain. Um, I think that the plan is probably to cut back on his rotation a little bit and work AJ Epinesa in. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's definitely somebody that I was looking to upgrade this off season. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously we had, you know, some cap restrictions. We were, we were playing it pretty tight this year. Um, I'm willing to trot out Mario Addison again, if it means we kept Daryl Williams and Mm -hmm. Matt Milano and John Feliciano, right. You know, you, you can't have a pro bowler at every position. Um, I, I would like to see Epinesa take a step up and be able to, and we'll talk about him. Um, I'd like to see him be able to take some of that workload away from him Mm -hmm. and, you know, Maybe after that, Mario Edison can go quietly into the night. and No hard feelings. Thanks for the couple of years, but I think that's a spot that needs to be upgraded. Right. Speaking of A.J. Epinesa, when the Bills originally picked him, I'm not going to lie, I hated the pick. The man did not perform well in the combine. Actually, like, really poor. It just showed a lot of people and the scouts and draft analysts thought he was pretty unathletic, which hurt his draft stock so much that he fell to the bills in the second round looking back i can't actually believe he was there he was a first round prospect although he did have a rough start to his career the bills wanted him to lose a lot of weight but he lost too much had some penalty issues got called off i believe he got called offside and i remember sean mcdermott was like get him out (laughs) you could visibly hear him like 
read right his back lips. To the bench, He's buddy. like, get out, get out of here. Get out. He had a concussion at the start of the Arizona game, and we could have definitely used him in that, um, you know, Hail Mary situation. Started looking better towards the end of the season. I'm optimistic looking forward, but I don't think he's going to blow up into, you know, a Yannick Ngakwe. He had one sack last year, but I am optimistic there is potential for him to grow. So, Justin, tell me how you feel about A.J. Epinesa. I think he had his moments in his rookie year. Um, So this guy kind of screams to me one of these Brandon Bean picks where – call it like a Dawson Knox pick where he sees something in this guy and I know when he's writing the name down on the draft card he doesn't expect this guy to be an impact player in the next two maybe three years Mm -hmm. um but he's got that that it thing that Bean likes and he's willing to wait on some of these guys to get them in in spots where other teams might not wait for it um he likes a little bit of a little bit of the bend on the edge for me um, to be, you know, that Joey Bosa game wrecker. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think kind of the way kind of the way the um, pass rushing is going in the NFL, it's not so much about that fast, twitchy guy off the edge anymore. It's starting to go more towards the consistent collapsing the pocket and everybody being in their zone so the quarterback has to step up into the pocket. Mm-hmm. And then you get that interior D-line pressure. These quarterbacks are getting rid of the ball in like 2.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, regardless of how fast you are, you know, it's more about collapsing upon them. And I think that's something that he'll be able to develop into. Right. Uh, Moving on to Trent Murphy. I personally think the Bills should have cut him, but hindsight is 2020. McDermott, as I mentioned, loves rotation, and that's why he stayed, in my personal opinion. He became a healthy scratch for a while but he did play well in the divisional round against the Ravens. He had two sacks. Justin, how do you feel about Trent Murphy? I couldn't agree with you more. And I think being at McDermott, I I think they even mentioned it, but I think they'd be honest and say like, you know, knowing the COVID situation, everything as it stands now, I think it's somebody that they would have, they would have caught last year. It would have been nice to have that cap number. Mm -hmm. Um, He was kind of like a, a luxury veteran so you didn't have to put Epinesa right in and expect the world from him um by the end of the season you know he he had his moments he had decent games whatever but Mm -hmm. same boat as you I think if uh, all things considered if if they knew what they knew now he wouldn't have been on the team last year so I'm I'm fine with him being gone he he wasn't really impressive in his tenure with the Bills right Moving on, Daryl Johnson. I loved his special team development. He always contributes. Not so much on his defensive end development. Didn't really seem like he got on the field too much. He had one sack last year. I like him and think he can get better, but time is running out. Justin, tell me how you feel about Daryl Johnson. Um, I would like to see a little bit more development out of him to be kind of a, a rotational player at the defensive end spot. Um, but his special teams alone, that's enough to, it's a Taiwan Jones right there. You know, he's, he's a running back in name only. Mm -hmm. Um, but that dude's made a whole career out of being good at special teams. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what we have in Daryl Johnson right now, Mm -hmm. whether he develops or not. Um, I would like to see more out of him, uh, in the defensive end rotation because he has all the physical tools. But as long as he's costing me next to nothing and he's making plays on special teams, anything he does in addition to that is a bonus to me. Right. Last two guys, Brian Cox Jr., Mike Love. Brian, uh, Both guys are practice squads. We'll see with Brian Cox Jr. and Mike Love. I actually like Mike Love. He's been around the team for a little bit. Not sure if he'll ever catch traction. He just keep, seems to be keep getting pushed down the depth chart, especially when the Bills brought in A.J. Epinesa. But I don't think Trent Murphy's coming back, so maybe Mike Love goes up. Justin, let's quickly wrap this up. <laughs> uh, Mike Love is uh, one of those training camp hero guys. He always performs really well mm-hmm. in the offseason. Both those guys, for me, are kind of on that bottom end of the roster. That's 
Brandon Bean loves tinkering with those bottom mm-hmm. three, four spots on the roster. If he if he thinks he can get any advantage from bringing somebody else in, mm-hmm. he'll do it. So I think those guys really have an uphill battle to make any sort of impact on the team. All right, let's shift to the interior defensive line, starting off with Ed Oliver. I love Ed Oliver. People were calling him the next Aaron Donald, which I I don't really know if that's fair. You know, it, 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 that's Aaron, not fair to put on anybody. Yeah, Aaron Donald is a freak of nature, and Ed Oliver is not. I'm not saying he's not a freak of nature, but that's that's a that's a tall order to live up to. People were down on him. I I don't know why he he didn't have Star next playing next to him. They were asking him to do different things outside of three techs so i'm optimistic that he's gonna do good next year he had three sacks this year and you know he's going to year three and big things happen in year three so justin tell me how you feel about ed oliver yeah i I love the guy um same as you said i i really want to see him playing next to star kind of his first year was a little bit rough um but his second year, he was supposed to be playing next to Star, and that's, you know, hit where we expected him to be playing. Um, a lot of people are saying like, "Well, he played the nose tackle in college, so he should have been fine with it." The NFL is a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're asking somebody that's like seventy pounds less than Star Latule to eat up double blocks all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just not his game. And I think, honestly, I think he did a pretty commendable job at playing out of position like that. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of want to see him freed up this year and work those one-on-one battles and hit him with the rip move and just get into the backfield and wreak some havoc. I think he could be special this year. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Ed Oliver. Moving on, Vernon Butler. Meh. Could have, could have. You were the wrong son. (laughs) Could have swore he was going to get cut, but he ended up helping the team out by restructuring his deal. Again, pretty cool. He's too inconsistent for my liking. Again, he has those Carolina ties, which a lot of Bills fans love to harp on for whatever reason. I don't really think having Carolina ties ties are a bad thing. So far since that has been introduced, we made it to the AFC Championship game, if I'm not mistaken. Vernon Butler, zero sacks. Justin, tell me how you feel about him. I I wanted him to be Jefferson. (laughs) Well... I want to quit in Jefferson to stay. Now, I I think this is kind of like the the Trent Murphy move last year. I think he kind of took a pay cut to stay around, and you're going to kind of be a depth rotation piece with, you know, getting Star back. Um, Harrison Phillips is getting a little healthier. Justin Zimmer flashed. I think he's kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. in the mix, but I don't think he's going to have the same role cut out for him going into next year, which is fine by me. Um, I thought Quentin Jefferson played better last year. Who knows if they offered him a pay cut first, and he said no thank you, so they kind of took the consolation prize. Mm -hmm. But he's back. We'll see what happens. Right. Harrison Phillips, a.k.a. Horrible Harry, but more like healthy scratch Harry when it came to the the season. Didn't have a hot, hot start to the season, Did do a little better towards the end. Clearly didn't fill Star's shoes like we all had hoped. He had zero sacks. I love the off-field work that he does. I am optimistic with him moving forward, but we'll see what happens. Justin, how do you feel? Yeah, he. I loved him in his rookie year. Uh, Seeing him with Kyle Williams, he even kind of looks like him. It looked like his older brother was mentoring him. (laughs) And he's a big boy coming off an ACL. Um, His second, and, two. Yeah, and kind of, you know, he started coming on at the end of the season. We do need more out of him. It's probably a make-or-break year for him. Um, but I think something we're going to keep getting back to here is we keep talking about people trying to fill that Star Latula lay role. And that's not an easy job to do, and there's not a lot of those guys in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And even Stars, I'm not going to claim he's like some sort of elite space eater there or something like that, you know. But just having to fill that slot just kind of shows his value. So I think Harrison Phillips is another kind of guy that can value from 
Starla Tula like, coming back. So there, there's not so much on his plate, and he can kind of go back to playing a little freer versus trying to fill that one specific role. That's a very hard role to fill. Right. Next up, Justin Zimmer. I love this guy. Single. He's got a great name. Right. Single handedly won us the Pats game. Right when we needed help with the defensive line, this man comes in and literally wins us the game. Forces that fumble out of Cam Newton. He's got a high motor, high effort, and he's very fast. I think, I, I believe he was clocked going 18 plus miles per hour at one point which is insane. So I, I, I want to know what his 40 time is. I don't know offhand. He had one sack last year, and that's, that's one more sack than Harrison or Vernon Butler had. So, Justin, how do you feel by ma- about my man Justin Zimmer? This dude's got some great juice. Oh, yeah. He, he's got that motor that doesn't stop, and what he lacks in natural skill and – all all those things he makes up for an effort and sometimes you just need an effort guy on the field mm-hmm. you know you can have these super fast physical awesome first round prospects that when the play gets 20 yards away from them, they gave up mm-hmm. and that was the new england player talking about you know this was cam newton was running 12 15 yards down the field justin zimmer was the last person in the world i thought was going to come haul ass and down this from the side of the right. back of the screen from the outside of the play to make that play mm-hmm. so i love an effort guy like that hopefully he gets a little bit more playing time i'd like to see what he can do with a little bit of a bigger role right last up star latulale he opted out of the bills playoff run well just the season in general and we definitely could have used him however i believe matthew fairburn reported that Star Latule will play this next season, so that's big. The The defensive line, interior defensive line, just got some help. But I, wanna, I want to caution Bill's ma- Mafia. If he comes back, it doesn't automatically mean that our run defense and defensive line woes are over. you got to remember, the Bill's run defense was still a problem last year, and it was a teams were exposing it as the season went on. He's also uncuttable. It would actually cost us money if we got rid of him or if we, or if he retired. So the only way that we can get star off the books is if we trade him, which I don't foresee happening because we need help at five tech. Justin, tell me how you feel about star Latule. Yeah, I, I was, upset with this signing when we made it i thought we overpaid for him um after seeing after seeing the team without him last year you know brandon bean's always putting these puzzle pieces together in his head and how they're going to develop together and how they're going to fit and you just you tried to finish a puzzle last year without one of the pieces in there Mm -hmm. so again like like you said it's it's not like that one guy is going to fix it put a band-aid over everything that was wrong last year Mm -hmm. but i think a lot of the problems can point towards well this is the piece that we were missing you know Mm -hmm. our linebackers weren't very effective in the run game because they weren't being kept clean Mm -hmm. um offensive linemen were getting to the second level now they're fighting through blocks to make the tackle um so my biggest concern is a big boy like that with a with a year off from football is he coming back in in football shape is is he ready to go and is he going to make that impact that we're looking for him to make so right only time will tell us what happens there but if we get a pretty good star latule back i think it does help the defense a lot right so that's going to wrap it up for the defensive line room let's transition to what the bills did in free agency in regards to the the defensive line Honestly, they just cut, Ver, uh, I'm sorry, Quentin Jefferson, and I believe that's it. They didn't bring anyone in. They didn't sign anyone. Am I am I crazy, Justin, or is that, that the only move that's I happened in regards it. to this room? Yeah, that's all. Okay. 
All right, well then let's just transfer over to your draft prospects. To my understanding, this year's draft, it's not as good of a year if you're looking for defensive tackle or defensive end, if I'm not mistaken. If the Bills were looking for an impact now player, we're sitting at 30, so the chances of us for one of those impact defensive tackles or defensive ends falling to us, it's probably unlikely. Justin, tell us about tell us about some draft prospects that you have in mind. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I don't, like you said, the, the top guys are going to probably be going earlier than this. Mm-hmm. Um, if we stay at them if we stay at 30 um i'm more interested in trading back i probably said it every episode and i'll say it again Uh, if you can find a trade partner i think it's a good year to trade back Mm -hmm. um if we're staying put i think gregory rousseau would be kind of the best fit with us um he's just a big raw physical freak um we don't have any tape on him from last year he opted out Mm -hmm. um but he's by many cited as um, like a long-term development player, really needs to refine his skill set. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're kind of in a win-now mode. We're kind of pushed our chips into the table. So um, at 30, I think we would probably be better served to go after, you know, maybe an explosive offensive player, maybe a cornerback too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think – kind of a developmental D end is really the way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, The guy that I really like would be Quincy uh, Quincy Roche, um, also out of Miami. Um, He's more of like a 3-4 outside linebacker than, you know, our base defense is more of a Mm 4-3. So I don't know how he would translate into our system. He's he's a little bit undersized. Um, Overall, I don't think it's really the draft for us to be addressing these things, I would have liked to see Carl Lawson is the guy that I really wanted at the end and his projection on spot track spot rec like eight, was like 8.9 eight, 8. 8 million. He signed for like 15. So yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I understand that the, the money didn't fall the right way, but yeah, I just, it's not the draft for me to be addressing these positions. We'll see what they do. Maybe there's a, I know Dalen Hayes looks like a decent day two or day three prospect. Um, The difference between taking somebody at like 30 and in the third or fourth round to me is just kind of that little extra physical gift and athleticism. Mm -hmm. I think most of the players in this draft at that position are going to kind of be developmental type players. So I'd rather go impact somewhere else that could be kind of a day one starter. Right. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a strong year if you're looking for defensive line help. And if you do pick someone up, you're going to have to tool them up, which is typical from a defensive tackle in a defensive end position, unless you're like a Miles Garrett or, you know, Joey Bosa, or I'm sorry, a Nick Bosa. And then you got drafted in the top 10. Yeah, and that's typically probably top five too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Next week, we're going to focus in on everything about the linebackers. If you're interested with joining our show, please reach out. We would love to have you on. Make sure to subscribe, rate, review. Justin, where can the people find you? And find me on all social medias, at jgods22. Um, hit me up if you have any questions. If you ever want to grab, get on the show, we're always looking for guests to come on in talk bills. Absolutely. And you can find me on social media by searching up two changs it's great always to have you here justin we'll see you next week go bills